Welcome to the Elements of Science. I'm Abigail from the Mind Academy and RKE, and today's topic is receptors, the little doors to the brain. Receptors are like a cell's communication stations, a bit like a dock on the surface of a cell. They allow particular substances, like specific drugs or the body's own chemicals, to dock at the cell. And once a molecule has docked there, the receptor relays some kind of chemical message into the cell. Receptors are located all over your body, on and in all of your cells. In drug science, we particularly care about the ones on neurons in the brain. Your brain consists of these neurons and other supporting cells which need to constantly communicate with each other, and receptors are part of how they do this. Receptors are located all over these cells, but the ones at the synapses connecting two neurons are particularly interesting for us. So let's zoom in on those. Here we are, here's a synapse with a big blue cartoon receptor that is not to scale. In real life, receptors are actually so small that scientists don't have microscope techniques good enough to photograph them in detail. Anyway, at the synapse, one neuron is always sending a chemical message to another, and receptors are how this message is received. So they are found, of course, on the neuron that's receiving the message. They are also found on the neuron that's sending a message because they can modulate the way a message is sent through other chemicals. Actually, they are located all over both neurons because neural signaling is really, really complicated. And each of these receptors is a docking station for particular molecules in your brain. Many will also respond to molecules from the outside, like medicines or drugs. And these molecules and drugs can interact with receptors in different ways. Let's use an adenosine receptor in the brain as an example. As the day wears on, your body produces a chemical called adenosine, which activates this adenosine receptor. And that ultimately makes you feel tired. This means adenosine is an agonist for the adenosine receptor. It activates it. But some molecules can also block receptors, and these are called antagonists. There's one you may know quite well. It's called caffeine. Caffeine is an antagonist for the adenosine receptor. It docks on the receptor, but instead of activating the biological response, it inhibits it, which is why caffeine helps you stay awake. It stops some of the physiological processes that make you tired in the first place. Different chemicals can also interact with their receptors in more complicated ways. So instead of blocking the receptor, they might, for example, make it send the opposite cellular signal to what it usually sends. They may also be able to dock at more than one site on the receptor, possibly changing its response to other stimuli. And different agonists can have very different effects at the same receptor. For example, serotonin and LSD affect some of the same receptors with very different results. Plus, don't forget, there are hundreds of types of receptors on and in all of the cells of your body. Some are actually sensory receptors and respond to light rather than chemicals, like the ones in your eye. Some also respond to mechanical stimulation, like those on your skin or in your ear, and many more respond to hundreds of different types of molecules, medicines, and drugs. Receptors are the way that drugs and medications affect the body, and although they're built for internal communication, they can be hijacked by external substances, for better or for worse. Receptors are the little protein gateways to changes in cells, cell networks, and ultimately, the brain, body, and mind. To learn more about receptors, you can browse these references, or check out our blog, where you'll find posts on specific receptors and their interactions with particular molecules. See you next time on the Elements of Science.